The original series, The Twilight Zone, aired from 1959 to 1964. And while that may seem like a long time ago, it has remained popular to this day. The wacky blend of science fiction and fantasy, coupled with its many plot twists and freaky scenarios, made this show crazy to watch. Because The Twilight Show was an anthology series, meaning that every episode stood alone from the others, there was no plot to follow. The show went through many different actors. Each episode had at least one new star, which made it an excellent opportunity for young actors to show off their chops. You may remember some of the child actors who performed so brilliantly on some of the most iconic Twilight Zone episodes, but where are they now? In this video, we'll show you just how much these young actors have changed over the years. Even if some of these actors had a destiny other than acting, most of the kids on this list still had a bright future to look forward to. Make sure you stick around until the very end, where we will reveal which child actor on the list grew up to direct some of the most famous movies known today. Facts First presents, The Kids from the Twilight Zone Are All Grown Up. If you remember watching The Twilight Zone, show us by clicking the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. Bill Moomy Bill Moomy acted in the Twilight Zone episode entitled It's a Good Life. The episode was based on a short story of the same name, which was written by Jeremy Bixby. The episode was so well written that many critics refer to it as the best episode of the entire series. What truly makes this episode stand out, of course, is the acting of young Bill Moomy. In the episode, he plays a terrifying character named Anthony Fremont. Little Anthony is only six years old, but he has unimaginable powers. He can read minds and control the world around him, and he manipulates his environment to his every whim. This is a particularly horrifying episode that makes you think about how terrible humans could be if they were gifted with godlike powers. Bill Moomy did an incredible job portraying such a scary character, and he didn't stop there. He clearly discovered his talent at a young age, and he continues to act today. After his appearance in the Twilight Zone episode, Moomy played the role of Will Robinson in another science fiction TV series called Lost in Space. He appeared in several other films and TV shows as a child, and today he works as a voice actor. One of his most recent works was a character in the popular animated web series, Bravest Warriors. Anne Gillian Anne Gillian acted in the episode Mute on The Twilight Zone. As you might be able to guess from the title, Anne Gillian's character, Ilsa Nielsen, is mute. However, an interesting twist to the story is she can use telepathy to communicate with people. At the beginning of the episode, her parents are tragically killed in a fire, and Ilsa must learn to integrate into society, but it's a painful struggle. Despite her incredible performance in the episode, her last name was misspelled with two N's in the end credits. Still, this captivating episode was a chance for Anne Gillian to display her raw talent as a young actor, and she continued to act until her final role in the TV series Walker, Texas Ranger in 2000. Before she retired from film, she was a relatively prolific actor, and she starred in a few different series, including the popular 80s sitcom It's a Living. She also acted in several musical comedies, including the Broadway show Sugar Babies. Unfortunately, Gillian found her career in film led others to hypersexualize her, an issue that many women face in the TV industry. After 2000, Anne Gillian decided to spend more time at home raising her son. She was also diagnosed with breast cancer during the 80s, and today she works hard to raise awareness for it. Mary Batum and Jeffrey Byron Mary Batum and Jeffrey Byron appeared as siblings in the episode The Bewitching Pool. This was the final episode of the first series of The Twilight Zone. Mary played the role of Sport, while Jeffrey played the role of Jeb. In this episode, the two kids can escape from their shallow, bickering parents into a secret dimension through their backyard swimming pool. In the end, the two decide to leave the real world forever and instead choose to live happily in their new paradise. Mary Batum did an amazing job playing the role of Sport, but that wasn't her first time acting. Her most famous role was as the character Scout in the 1962 film To Kill a Mockingbird. She was only 10 at the time, and she was the youngest actor to date to receive an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actress. She retired from film in 1966 after acting in the movie Let's Kill Uncle, but she has since appeared in two documentaries about her role in To Kill a Mockingbird, as well as two other films. Today, she works as a college test coordinator and an art restorer. Jeffrey Byron, who played sports younger brother Jeb, went on to become a popular actor as well. He has played roles in the movie Enough About Jack and the 2009 film Star Trek. He's also acted in TV shows, including The Bold and the Beautiful. Ricky Kelman Ricky Kelman appeared as the character Alex in the episode Young Man's Fancy. In this episode, an older Alex returns to his old home to pack up his belongings before moving into a new house with his bride. However, he is haunted by both the ghost of his mother and memories of his childhood. While Ricky Kelman may not have played the starring role in this particular episode, he had an impact nonetheless, and he was talented enough to continue acting for some time. 
After his appearance on The Twilight Zone, Ricky Kelman acted in other TV shows, including Our Man Higgins and The Dennis O'Keefe Show. As a young adult, he also acted in the films Follow Me Boys and The First Time. However, Kelman did not pursue acting for an especially long time. He appeared in two episodes of the anthology series Insight, once in 1973 and again in 1974. After that, however, he retired from film for good. Surprisingly enough, his older brother Terry Ross Kelman was also a child actor. Terry was active in his acting career between 1954 and 59 before his final role in the series Wagon Train. It seems that the buzz for showbiz runs in the family, however short-lived their careers may have been. Tracy Stratford while some of the episodes of The Twilight Zone play more with science fiction elements, others are clearly derived from straight horror. Child actor Tracy Stratford played the character Christy in the episode Living Doll. In this episode, Christy's mother buys her a doll named Talkie Tina. However, the doll proves to be evil and makes the problems of Christy's already dysfunctional family much worse. If you thought that the talking doll was creepy enough, wait till you hear what happens at the end of the episode, when the little doll becomes evil enough to commit murder. Tracy Stratford's role as Christy may have been upstaged by the sheer terror of Talkie Tina, but she was a strong enough actor to earn a place on this list. You might be shocked to learn she was only four years old when she appeared on the show. After The Twilight Zone, Tracy continued to act in a few films and TV shows, including A Charlie Brown Christmas where she voiced the character Lucy Van Pelt. Of course, the busy life of an actor isn't for everyone, and Tracy Stratford decided she was better suited to a quiet life. Nowadays, she works as a librarian at a high school in Bellingham, Washington. Morgan Brittany most of the actors on this list only earned a role in one episode of The Twilight Zone, but young Morgan Brittany acted in two. She had roles in both The Valley of the Shadow and Nightmare as a Child. Her role in The Valley of the Shadow wasn't quite as prominent as her other role, but it's still easy to recall the iconic moment of the young girl zapping away a dog. In Nightmare as a Child, Morgan Brittany plays the character Marky, a younger version of the main character, Helen. In this episode, young Marky prompts Helen to recall the grisly murder of her mother, a traumatic memory that Helen had repressed until that point. After acting in The Twilight Zone, Morgan Brittany also appeared in Dallas, a soap opera where she played the character Katherine Wentworth. She played a variety of supporting and side roles in various films and television series. When she turned 18, Morgan became a dancer and a model for a time, and she continued to act as well. Today, she's a political commentary for conservatives and has appeared on both Fox News and CNBC. She also co-owns the site Politichicks, where she co-anchors and discusses conservative news. Stephen Perry Stephen Perry acted in the episode Big Tall Wish, where he plays a young boy named Henry Temple. Henry Temple makes a wish for famous boxer Bo Lee Jackson to win a round. After Henry Temple explains what happens to his hero, however, Bowley does not believe him, and the wish reverses itself. This is a sad episode which states that while magic exists, it can only exist if people believe in it. Two years after he appeared in The Twilight Zone, Stephen Perry acted in the film A Raisin in the Sun. He acted on and off for a while until 1997, where he appeared in the film Escape from Atlantis. His acting days are now behind him, but don't worry, Stephen seems to be doing exceptionally well. In 2016, he opened his own restaurant in L.A. called Stevie's Creole Cafe. Michael Burns Michael Burns played the role of Paul Stockton in the Twilight Zone episode, The Shelter. In this episode, a birthday party in an idyllic suburban setting is interrupted by a broadcast that warns a nuclear attack may be imminent. The Stockton family is able to hide in their fallout shelter, but their fearful neighbors rip it apart to try to get inside to safety. Even though it's revealed in the end that the nuclear attack was a false alarm, the Stocktons realize that you don't need bombs to destroy each other. Michael Burns may not have played the main character, but his acting in this particular episode was compelling nonetheless. As a teenager, he continued to act in films and TV shows such as 40 Guns to Apache Pass, Gunsmoke the Virginian, and Journey to Shiloh. He acted throughout the late 60s and early 70s, but he found a new calling in life in 1980 when he became a history professor at Mount Holyoke. He married the president of the college at the time, Elizabeth Topham Kennett. Michael Burns has since published three books, France and the Dreyfus Affairs, A Documentary History, Dreyfus, A Family Affair, 1789-1945, to and Rural Society and French Politics, Boulangism and the Dreyfus Affair, 1886-1900. to Today, it's rumored that he breeds horses, which might seem like an odd career change, but as they say, to each his own. Ron Howard Ron Howard acted in the episode Walking Distance. His appearance in this episode was short-lived. For a few moments, he gestures to the main character and invites him to play marbles. While Howard may have only played a supporting role, he went on to become the most famous person on this list. He acted in The Andy Griffith Show between 1960 and 68, where he played Opie Taylor. After that, he starred in Happy Days for six long years. While Ron Howard occasionally continues to act today, he found an even more prominent passion, directing. 
His first experience as a director came in 1977 when he directed the film Grand Theft Auto. After that, he went on to direct 24 separate films, with more on the way. Some of his most notable works include How the Grinch Stole Christmas, A Beautiful Mind, Cinderella Man, and Solo, A Star Wars Story. Ron Howard may be much older now than he once was, considering he was born in 1954, but he shows no signs of slowing down. His origins as a side character in The Twilight Zone may have been humble, but he's since become a renowned actor and director. Which child actors were you more surprised by? The ones who went on to become famous actors, or the ones who retired from film at a younger age? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to Facts First for more videos.